Sometimes the examiners are so kind to us and they give us a picture of a face. If this happens to you, you are in for a top grade straight away. Because one massive advantage of having a face is that you get to describe what the person looks like, but also what they are thinking. Now, we are going to meet a brilliant student, I've never met her, but she emailed me this, called Rose, and she has doubled that advantage by not only including the character in the picture, but putting her own self or her own persona as another character into the description. Let's jump in and see how it works. Her first job is to stick to the brief. She has to describe an old person, and it's got to be suggested by this picture, and she's taken the easy route and said, this is the old person I'm going to describe. So she said, what kind of person might this be? And the first thing she's thought of is wisdom. Enough said, let's jump in. So she knows that in primitive societies, the wise person was called a shaman. Now, you don't have to decide that. You could have looked at that picture and said, I'll make it a doctor. I'll make it a psychiatrist. I'll make it an old hermit living in the woods. Doesn't matter. As long as you get an image of what this person is, you're in. She has decided it's a shaman. The shaman's intense peace was startling. Wisdom, acceptance and pure love oozed out of him, meandering into my very soul. She hasn't wasted time planning which parts of the face that she's going to talk about. She's just gone straight in with what he looks like, what he makes her feel, because she's determined to get a good grade. She's decided, right, I'll just start writing interesting sentences straight off. First one, not so interesting, starts with the word the, but then, oh, I'll whap in a pattern of three. Wisdom, acceptance and pure love oozed out of him. She knows that verbs are the most important part of any description or any writing, and so she's thought really hard about her verbs. It's oozed out of him. That works really well. Meandering into my very soul, maybe not quite as well, but it does give us an image of her slowly changing, because meandering is a slow verb. Again, she's jumped to a new way of starting a sentence. Scrupulously, I examined him. Now, notice that's what she's doing to the picture in the exam, and rather than worrying about it, she's just used that experience, put it straight into her writing. Well done, Rose. Deep-rooted marks on his face bore witness of experience and battles fought. Battles fought over the self and won. Now, this is genius. She's thinking, what would a shaman be fighting against? She's decided that would be a battle of the mind, which would fit a psychiatrist if you chose that, and of course it allows her to write with a metaphor, again showing off a technique for the examiner, that works in the writing. It's not just there to show off, it's there to make us understand the character even better. Brilliant. A winding, wispy beard, symbolising the flow and ebb of truth, confronted my past decisions. What's going on here? A bunch of language techniques that she's just throwing in. She isn't thinking, oh, I must show off my language techniques. She's thinking, I must make each sentence interesting, and so I'll just go to the picture and see something. Here, she's noticed a beard. She's decided it's winding and wispy. Well, is it? No, it's not winding. It is wispy, but she's chucked in winding because of the sound. The alliteration goes so well with Wispy. You will also notice that each idea she has gives her a new paragraph. If the examiner is reading your work and there are lots of paragraphs in it, it simply feels longer than it is, but it's also much easier for the reader to navigate, and so it makes more sense. Don't write in big, chunky paragraphs, because she could have said, hey, this is all about the face, therefore I'm just going to write one massive paragraph. And even if she'd written exactly the same words, she would score a lot less because it would feel less like a real writer. Paragraph every time you have a new idea. A coarse, gentle hand squeezed mine and a kind smile carved itself onto the Charvin's face. Notice how she keeps using these brilliant verbs, as I mentioned before. Here we've got carved. And the verbs are a way in to metaphor. 
So obviously this smile didn't literally carve itself into the shaman's face, but it works brilliantly because we associate carving with lines and we've got deep lines in the image. Again, he's not smiling, is he? But it doesn't matter. This is just something suggested by the image. Attentive ears stood out from his head. Having ears standing out from the head is one thing, but then making them attentive symbolise that he's not just listening to what she says, he's listening to everything he sees. And that idea is repeated here, each whisker and hair sat still. So she's personified his hair and his beard as though he's listening to her with his whole body. Now that is a genius idea you can simply steal. Personify the features of a character's face. Dramatically interesting writing straight away. As the fire roared, his eyes pierced mine. There was no escape. All parts of my being, light and dark, were laid out like a card deck. Brilliant. Each sentence is different again. She's building in contrast. And now she's built in a simile. And the idea of it being a card deck is brilliant because it gives us the idea of chance. But she's also thinking of a tarot pack and possibly didn't know the words for the tarot pack. And is thinking of destiny. What does your future hold? Here's the card deck with all those images to show you. The atmosphere in the room was one of self-examination, much like a test, but the difference was there was no expectation or mistruth. Notice that she's used her own situation again. She's doing an exam practice, so she's thinking about a test. So, hey, she's put that in the writing. Now, this is great. This is what you do under pressure. Everything that you think, you try to put into your writing somehow, so you don't waste time with the planning. The shaman was merely a mirror reflecting my whole life in a second, reflecting the people I'd hurt and the people I'd helped. Notice how she's thinking in contrasts all the time, which makes the next idea easy to write. You just say, oh, what did I write here? Okay, now I need something that contrasts with it. I'll add that on. And that also creates interesting sentences. She's thinking, I need to keep showing off my sentence structures. I'll have a one-word paragraph. And it was so. Soon, the medicine began to take effect. All conflicting thoughts sharpened. Again, look at these verbs. So impressed with them. When you think carefully about the verbs, your writing becomes surprising, vibrant and true. Doubts were cleared. Look, another short sentence to echo that one. And having written this one, her mind is automatically thinking, oh, that looked really good, I'll do another one. An intense feeling of grief bulldozed through me. There we go, there's the verb again. I saw everything I'd ever done in my entire life return to me, each action wanting acknowledgement. This vocabulary here works with the idea of this silent figure, the shaman, just waiting for her to start thinking about herself in a different way. Yet before I became lost to regret for everything I'd ever done wrong, for all my imperfection, all my hatred, rage, deceit, lies, manipulation and indifference, love the list. And the list is also a brilliant way to show off her vocabulary and make sure that she's not using vocabulary in the wrong way. If you put that vocabulary into a list, it's really powerful. Always having a list in your description is also a really powerful way to make your writing interesting because you pack so much information into a small space. The shaman reached out a calloused healing hand. It was a lifeline. Look at how she's echoing this idea of the short sentence. And it's a really cool idea to do that at the ends of paragraphs. Also thinking about sentence variety, she has decided to have what I call the long show-off sentence. This is 34 words long and it includes the list. Notice the list doesn't finish the sentence but is inside it. In slow motion I watched his chest expand heavily, his gaze rise to match mine and his lips part to say one last message. Notice because she's in the habit of writing a list sentence, she's repeated that idea of a list here. It's got three parts to it. She's cleverly ended her piece with only one bit of dialogue. Throughout this, the character of the shaman has been silent. It is a moment-to-moment -moment choice we all have to make. Will we choose love 
or hate. This is brilliantly crafted, and I imagine it's a sentence that Rose already had in mind. She's probably just borrowed it from a film or a book. It's not cheating. It's brilliant. The ending works really effectively because it's a sudden change. This is the first and only piece of dialogue in the whole piece of writing, and so it works. But can you see how having a character has allowed her to write so much more, not just a description of what she's seeing, and then placing herself as a character with this character has also allowed her to write so much more? Go back and see how she's used what's in the face as a springboard to write about not just what she's seeing, but the character themselves. And then give it a go, because this question was from 2018, and it's very likely that you will get a character's face this year. Well, Rose has given you a way in. Now, if you want to get even better at description, the video appearing here is going to show you exactly how to get top grades if you don't get a face, see you soon on my channel. Thank you, Rose. You are awesome. Good luck in your exam. Let me know how your results go.